Alrighty, what you're looking at there is a different kind of wiring configuration I'm trying for a transformer. So basically what you have is this thicker core wire which is 1mm and that is wrapped in this thinner 0.5mm copper wire as you can see there. And then the whole thing is wrapped around a C core that was a toroid but I've cut a small piece out of the bottom so as it is not a complete loop. So that's basically what we're looking at there. It's a thicker core wire and then the smaller wire wrapped all the way around it. And of course I did this by a quick machine I built rather than hand wound because um, nearly 400 turns just in that short piece around our core wire. So we'll run through the circuit. Um, it's quite simple really, all we're doing really is using this transistor to switch on and off the outer windings um, at a rapid rate. And on the back side here you'll see I have a 1k pot and a 1 ohm CVR. <coughs> A little neon there across the base em uh, emitter collector junction just in case we get some spikes or something if my little pot passes out but so far so good. A 1 ohm CVR on the emitter of the transistor that is to measure our current in each pulse. Um, the transistor base is being driven by our function generator at 5 kilohertz 6% duty cycle, um, 3 volts, <coughs> excuse me, so we have a 100 ohm resistor on the base and we also have a diode here, a blocking diode, so during the 94% of the uh, cycle when the voltage is inverted, nothing can be delivered to the system because our blocking diode stops it. Uh, that's basically it. This is just a smoothing cap to help the power supply cope with the sharp pulses. So the power supply tops up the cap and the cap supplies the necessary energy to the system. Alright, um, our scope. Channel 1 is across the cap showing us our voltage. Channel 2, the blue channel, is across our CVR on the input. And channel 3 here is across our 1 ohm load resistor, which is across the secondary coil, that being our thick one inside these wraps here. So the uh, object of this experiment was to see if we can place a load on the secondary without it having any effect whatsoever on the primary side. And it looks like we may have achieved this with this setup being that the magnetic field that the primary produces is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field produced by the secondary when current is flowing through it. So it seems like um, the secondary is not um, fighting against the primary as in um, no back EMF from the secondary to the primary because the magnetic fields are at 90 degrees to each other. And I'll show you what I mean on the scope. <coughs> um, so our pot is up at 1k at the moment so we have 1001 ohms roughly um, as our resistance or our load across the secondary. have our multimeter is reading the current to the cap so very smooth our power supply saying 34 milliamps at the moment and I'll just turn it off you will see I have it um, current limited to 60 milliamps so more than enough to do the job just a safety precaution And you'll see it now charging the cap, and now the cap is charged. <clears throat> Alright, 
So now we're going to look at the scope and zoom in a little there. Hopefully you can read the numbers. Alright, so once again our blue channel is showing us the current through the CVR, um, which once again is on the emitter, negative side of the circuit. The yellow channel here showing us our voltage across the cap, 12.2 volts. And channel 3, our purple channel, is the signal across our 1 ohm load resistor. And that's going to tell us the current flowing through that resistor and the secondary. So what we want to be able to do is draw maximum current through the secondary without our primary changing. You will see um, it's saying 137 milliamps average current and that is way different than our power supply multimeter because I have expanded the time frame on the scope and we are looking at only one pulse. If I put in a whole heap of pulses, um, that average current drops down to the same as our digital multimeter and power supply is telling us. So the digital multimeter is telling us accurately what the average current flowing in is. And the scope at the moment is looking at this one pulse in the frame. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to wind this pot down, decrease the resistance value of that pot and I'll keep going until it's um, at its zero point which will show us the voltage across that 1 ohm CVR and I have that channel 3 set to milliamps so that is showing us the current flowing through that CVR and the secondary coil So when I wind the pot down, decrease the resistance across our secondary, we don't want this to change and we don't want the voltage value to change. So let's have a look and see what happens. So I'm slowly winding it up. You can see we are starting to get current flowing through that CVR. The value we can see and now the potentiometer is um, <clears throat> at its lowest resistance value and this purple trace is showing us the value of current flowing through that CVR so it's saying 193 odd milliamps um, of course like the average current through our CVR on the input when I add more cycles to the screen that of course will change but what we do note is that our current value has not changed we're still drawing 37 milliamps it's our 12.2 volts and if I wind this pot back down to our 1k resistance we still have 37 milliamps 12 volts and if we check out the value of this as far as our scope is saying it's 137 milliamps I once again wind the pot back up It's now telling us 136, 137 milliamps. <clears throat> so we have achieved what we want to do um, in that placing a load on the secondary in this configuration has absolutely no effect on the primary whatsoever and the inductance value on the primary side is obviously not changing because we do not see a change in the waveform shape nor do we see a change in the current playing into the system. So turn the secondary resistance value back up. Now our current
current value flowing through our load resistor is almost nothing um, and our primary input side is exactly the same still does not change so there you go we have achieved what we want to achieve with this wiring configuration um, so there seems to be um, no lens effect from the secondary to the primary whatsoever due to the magnetic fields running through the primary being 90 degrees to the uh, magnetic fields that are created by the secondary when the load is placed across the secondary. Alright, uh, that's it for this video and we can only go uh, forward from here a much bigger toroid more turns heavier wire and I believe the results will be even better so <clears throat> now I just have to find a toroid large enough to do the job and I do have one under there as you can see with lots of wire wrapped around it that I think I'm going to have to pull apart. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you next video.